Meal prepping is a great way to set yourself up for the week. You can easily customize the recipes to your own diet, tailor them to suit your budget, and make a week's worth of food in one cooking session. This saves you so much time in the kitchen over the week. But there's a problem. With most meal prep methods, you're eating the exact same meal five days in a row. This gets boring really quickly and this potentially life-changing cooking method just gets forgotten about. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily adapt your meal prep method so you'll have five different meals with different flavors, textures, and most importantly, all done in less than one hour. There'll be no extra work, the usual amount of washing up. All I'll do is change the way you think about and approach your meal prep method. Now you're probably asking yourself how you're going to do this. So let's jump straight into the prep so I can show you. For this recipe, I'm using skinless chicken breasts. We're gonna prepare them for maximum flavor and tenderness. Secure your chopping board, grab your sharpest knife, and first up, we'll trim off any bits of fat, silver skin, bone, or anything else you don't like the look of. Then remove the fillet, otherwise known as a tender, if it's still attached. You can either cook these separately or just save them for something else. Position the breast with the thickest part facing your knife. Lightly press the chicken onto the chopping board and make a horizontal cut going from top to bottom. Only go around 90% of the way through, so the breast opens on a hinge like this. Think of it like slicing into a baguette or a pita bread, just with less of a sawing action and more of a slicing action. For all of this chicken prep, you want to use the dirty hand, clean hand method. So my left hand is gonna deal with all the pieces of chicken and my right hand will stay clean and deal with everything else. If you forward plan by having some sheets of paper towel ripped off ready, salt in a dish you can use with one hand instead of a grinder, and things like cooking oil out on the side instead of in the cupboard, set yourself up like this and you'll only need to wash your hands once. If you don't, then you'll be in the sink washing your hands 10 times over. It may not seem like it, but this is a huge time saver. For this little breast, I'm leaving the fillet on, so it's a similar size to the others. It's exactly the same process, just fold the fillet out of the way so you don't accidentally slice it off. Once you have your breasts butterflied, it's time to give them some flavor. Cover them with a little cooking oil, rub it all over the surface of the meat so it's covering the chicken edge to edge. Then flip them over and do the same on the other side. Next up, season them with finely ground salt on both sides. Whatever you like to use, kosher salt, Himalayan rock salt, or maybe a sea salt. The first of the key ingredients to make this meal prep 2.0 method work is ground spices. More specifically, spice blends. I'm using Indian food as my inspiration, so I've chosen five popular Indian spice blends that can be easily made by mixing everyday ground spices together. Here I've got tikka masala, which is probably my favorite, tandoori spice, garam masala, chat masala, and England's favorite, the mild curry powder. I'm not gonna show you how to make these in this video. The recipes for all of them are down in the description below. They take 30 seconds to make and last for months once mixed. Just season the breasts all over, one spice per piece, rub them in a little so the chicken is evenly covered, flip it over and do the same on the other side. Repeat that process for all of the breasts and with a little forward thinking, you have five different flavored pieces of chicken done in 10 minutes. If you don't have a lot of these spices or don't want to commit to buying so many at first, then you can still achieve the same level of variety just in a simpler way. For example, we could do one breast with just cracked black pepper, one with paprika, garlic powder, cayenne, lemon zest, dried herb, chili oil, chili flakes, fresh garlic, coriander. The possibilities really are endless. However you decide to season your chicken, leave it to marinate for 20 minutes up to 24 hours. Next up, the rice. I'm making a cheats version of jeera rice. I'm cheating because this version only uses one spice instead of the traditional seven or eight. This one spice takes the rice to at least a level eight in terms of flavor, and it's actually what the recipe is named after. Jeera, AKA cumin seeds. For an authentic Indian flavor, you'll want to use basmati rice, but other types of long grain rice will also work for this recipe. You need just under half a cup per serving, so I'm cooking two full to the brim cups for five servings. If you want to be more accurate with your measurements, then 80 grams of raw rice per portion is a good size. The first step is to wash the rice. Just rinse it two or three times in water until the water looks less milky, then leave it to sit in a strainer until we need it. Next, place a large saucepan over a medium heat and add some high smoke point oil. Ghee would work great as well. Let that heat for a moment and add four teaspoons of whole cumin seeds. Toast them for a few minutes over a medium heat until they smell fragrant and add the rice and continue to toast that for a few more minutes. This step is adding flavor to the rice as well as making it more forgiving to cook. It has less chance of coming out mushy and overcooked if you do this step. It will stick to the base of your pan, but don't panic, keep the heat on a medium low and regularly stir to unstick it. If you've never fried raw rice before, this won't feel normal. The pan will feel too dry and there won't seem like there's much going on. 
but after a few minutes, your rice will be looking more like this, lightly golden in areas with an incredible toasted smell. Now add one and a half cups of water for every cup of rice that you have. I've got two cups of rice, so I need three cups of water, along with around a teaspoon and a half of salt. Turn the heat up to high, place a lid on and bring the pan to a simmer. Once it's simmering, turn the heat down to as low as it can go and leave it to cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. Moving on to the veg, this part of the recipe is so adaptable. Use whatever seasonal vegetables you can get where you live. I've got a carrot, butternut squash, red onion, broccoli, and cauliflower. For all of these to cook in the same amount of time in the oven, we need to cut the harder veg smaller than the softer veg. For the carrot, I've literally just cut it in half lengthways. I haven't peeled it or anything. The squash is cut slightly bigger than the carrot. The onion I cut into quarters. And for the broccoli and cauliflower, I just cut them into a big wedge. This is around the 10th of cauliflower and a quarter of the broccoli. Next, I'm going to do an optional, super simple marinade for the veg with oil, chili flakes, salt, and some black pepper. Give everything a good mix to get the veg evenly coated in the oil and seasonings. I would usually do this in a mixing bowl, but because I'm meal prepping and cooking this recipe in the fastest way, I'm saving precious minutes on the washing up. Space everything out on the tray. This will help the veg to roast evenly and quickly. And if you need to satisfy your OCD, then line everything back up how it was. Load that into a preheated oven set at 200C, 390F for 15 to 20 minutes. At this point, your rice should be about done. You'll know it's ready when you can't see any more water in the bottom of the pan. Now just turn the heat off and leave it to sit. No draining, no drama, no rice cooker needed. Just leave it to sit, steam, and finish slowly cooking with the lid on. Time to cook this chicken. It's had around half an hour of marinating. Place your biggest saute pan over a high heat and add a little high smoke point oil. You don't need much, just a little. Let that get hot for a few minutes until you start to see some wisps of smoke coming from the pan. Then add in the chicken. For most frying pans, you'll probably be able to fit two to three breasts in at a time. Don't try and cram them all in. If your pan is smaller, don't worry, just cook in more batches. Or another great option is under the grill, also known as a broiler. This uses less oil and it's a really great hands-off way to cook this recipe in one hit. After two or three minutes, check you're happy with the color, flip the breasts over and cook for another minute or two on the other side. Butterflying chicken like this is a real game changer in terms of time saved when cooking and the end result is a much more enjoyable piece of meat. Once you're happy your chicken is cooked, place it onto something to rest. In total, they only took four or five minutes. I've been wondering if I should include the macros for these recipes. If that's something you're interested in knowing, then leave me a comment below. And if enough people are interested, then I'll add it to the recipe. For the remaining chicken, just give your pan a little extra oil if it needs it and repeat the process. By this point, the veg has had its 20 minutes of roasting. Everything is evenly cooked because of the forward thinking about sizes and cooking times. We've got well roasted carrots and squash alongside crispy broccoli, great looking onions and caramelized cauliflower. Once everything's cooled down, we've got five individually unique meals for the week. They all smell incredible, are completely not boring and we achieved it all in less than an hour in the kitchen. The rice is the key to making these meals filling enough to get you through till the end of the day. But the problem is, a lot of people are scared of cooking it. So go check this video out next, where I answer some of the most common questions surrounding rice. Like, should I soak it? How should I cook it? How much water should I use? And I'll give you three of my favorite recipes, so you'll never have a reason to cook plain, boiled, boring rice ever again.